Hey guys, um, so today's lesson, I always cite it as the hardest one of the year, so because of the extraordinary circumstances uh, behind what we're doing here, um, I'm not really going to go through the entirety of the lesson. Uh, it, you'll, you'll see it again at some point, whenever you learn the series again. Uh, but here's the do now. I'm going to modify the lesson just so you know. This is actually beneficial, so try it out. Uh, and then, you know, yeah, resume now. I guess I should have said pause there. Uh, but you should actually recognize that this is the function e to the x. I mean, this is the Maclaurin series from the, uh, the, the cheat sheet that I gave you uh, last uh, lesson. Um, so when you find the derivative, you should see that the derivative is the same as the function. The integral is the same as the function. Therefore, the function is e to the x. That's just a, a nice thing to uh, point out there. <clears throat> Let's see where we are. Now, there's the homework. It's posted online. Uh, at some point, it will be. Uh, I guess already it is. So, section 9.3 is Taylor's theorem. And really, the uh, the important thing from this uh, from this section is uh, is error knowing what the error is. So when we use Maclaurin series or Taylor series, we cannot actually use the entire series. We have to stop somewhere. So what we run into is what is good enough. Like here, it says when we use part of a Taylor series to estimate the value of a function, the end of the series that we do not use is called the remainder. We know the size of the remainder, then we know how close our estimate is. So, I mean, look, looking at this, just going off of some sort of example here, if I have sine of x, I know that sine of x, again, going off of the previous section, we have sine of x is 1, no, not 1 x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial plus x to the 9th over 9 factorial. And really, in order to use sine of x, or to calculate the exact value of sine of x, we would have to go up to the nth term of negative 1 to the nth x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial plus blah 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 and we know that in this series there are infinite terms so we actually can't get to that nth term so what we run into is we run into those partial sums that came up uh, a couple of uh, sections ago so I, I'm hoping you guys can see this on my calculator really well um, that I've got <clears throat> let's see can I get up closer there we go just using the tissue box to raise it up a little bit. You can see in y1, I have sine of x. In y2, I have the first partial sum of sine of x. That's this right here, just the first term. In y3, I'm going to show you here in just a second, I have x minus x cubed, to the, uh, x cubed over 3 factorial. And then in y4, I have that. In y5, I have this. So again, looking here, you can cross-reference that with your notes. I have sine of x. I have the first partial sum of sine of x. I have the fifth partial sum of sine of x. Seventh partial sum. I always get tripped up. Do you go by the number? You go by the you go by the exponent there, not how many uh, terms it has there. So this is the fifth partial sum, because I've got fifth exponent. Seventh partial sum. Ninth partial sum. I think I get up to, yeah, I get up to the seventeenth partial sum on this one. So, uh, I'm going to go in here, and I'm actually going to just do zoom trig, and I'm going to hit enter, and you're going to see it graph. It's going to take a while to graph, especially when we get to those higher order polynomials. So there, you can see the blue is sine of x, and the red is just the first partial sum. Again, first partial sum is just x. We should be able to recognize x is a linear function, and therefore is a bad approximation of sine of x, except right in the middle. See how it lines up really well right in the middle there? And in comes the third partial sum, where we have a cubic here. So that cubic is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial. And you can see it's still a bad approximation, but the goodness of the approximation actually radiates further out. It's still dead on perfect in the center. But as we go further and further out, 
uh, it gets worse and worse and worse. That's a key to look at as I get these other partial sums running in here. So you can see that purple one's actually calculating a little bit slower, but the, uh, the, the goodness extends out further, and that green is going even slower. The reason why it's going slower and slower, it has to calculate more and more terms uh, in order to uh, produce the value here. So again, uh, I can't remember what number we're up to. Let's see. Uh, whatever number we're up to, I think we're up to like the ninth partial sum or something like that now. Yeah, ninth, because I can see it's a positive. And again, it just gets better and better. It's always going to be dead on perfect in the center. What you look at here is the worst approximation is further out from the center of the uh, series. And that red one is taking forever. There, see it crawling across the screen there? I think if I was if I was to let this get up to the 17th partial sum, which would mean there would be 10 functions on the screen, uh, it looks like there's only going to be two more, excluding this one. But the more and more terms you add on to this uh, function, the slower the drawing of the graph happens because the calculator has to calculate all of those values there. All right. I'm going to flip to the next slide. Hopefully that's going to be done graphing here at some point. Oh, there's the home. Oh, it was on the back there. <laughs> Find a Taylor polynomial that will serve as an adequate substitute for sine of x on the interval from negative pi to pi. So again, there's that interval that we're talking about here. We're going to go from negative pi to pi so that I can cover one, uh, one period of the sine function so that I can get all the values of sine of x. If I wanted to get more values, I could just add 2 pi or subtract 2 pi onto these values to find the value that I actually want here. Now, this kind of seems ridiculous that I would want to find a Taylor series, uh, a Taylor polynomial to represent this function because uh, I could just use my calculator for this one but this the idea behind this is you're training a, mach a machine to do this so you're you you're you're the person writing the code for the for the calculator I'm just gonna put the sine of x series up here again x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial plus x to the ninth over 9 factorial. Where do I have to stop in order for this to be good enough? So 11th over 11 factorial plus... Eh, Alright, let's give up there. Uh, so again, I hope I don't have to go to the 17th uh, polynomial because the 17th polynomial is still drawing. I think that's the 17th polynomial right there. Yeah, I finally stopped thinking. So there's... <laughs> up to the 17th partial sum of sine of x. Sorry, I didn't bust out the tissue box. Uh, I don't want to go up to the 17th uh, term because that's going to be a pain in the butt. So again, I want to find out what is adequate. And adequate, that's a subjective term. We're in math, so we're not allowed to be subjective. So let's just say adequate, let me make sure I spell adequate correctly, means the error we don't care whether it's up or down. So the error is going to be within three decimal places. I'm going to cheat here for a second. Yeah, okay, cool. That's what I thought I was going to do. So I want it to be less than 0. 0.0001. And I go for three decimal places to be accurate. So three decimals, no error. And then I can get an error on the fourth decimal because AP tells me I need to round to the third decimal. So this is going to produce a polynomial where I can actually uh, find, where I can find three decimals. So looking here, I would have to, my error, the magnitude of my error is going to be equal to the difference between sine of x and 
whatever polynomial I choose. So whatever partial sum I go out to here. Now here's where I run into some, uh, some niceness here. The niceness is all I have to do is find the error at the endpoints and any other error is going to be smaller than that. So really, in order to find the error here, the error is going to be equal to the magnitude of sine of pi minus p sub n of pi. Again, just going at the endpoint so that I make sure every other error is even less than that. And that's pretty, pretty darn close here. Now, what's nice here, I know what sine of pi is, so I can evaluate what the error is here. So this is going to be equal to the magnitude of sine of pi. Well, just going off of my unit circle right here, I know pi is right over here. That's going to be negative 1, 0. Oh, y value is 0, so that's going to be 0 minus p sub n of pi. Well, 0 minus p sub n of pi is just negative p sub n of pi. Absolute value. I don't care what this is. All I have to do is find out the absolute value of p sub n of pi. Well, good news. Tissue box with a llama wearing bunny ears for some reason. I go in here. I have the first 17 partial sums of, uh, of sine of x. I can go into my table. I hope I can go into my table. Yes, I can. Apparently, I didn't clear this out and had to calculate all those values. All I have to do here is type in pi, and I can actually find out that, well, sine of x, I have zero error. At uh, the first, that, that uh, third partial sum where I had just x, 3.1416, okay, that's not less than 0. 0.00001. I just go through here and find out where do I have 10 to the negative fourth. Oh, look at that. So the eighth, uh, the seventh or the eighth one? So I can actually see 10 to the negative fourth, but that's 4 times 10 to the negative fourth. So I think I'm going to want to go for that eighth one. Y8, Y8, yeah, right there. What I can see is that if I go out to the 13th term. And again, here, really, if I didn't have all this stuff plugged into my calculator, I could just be going uh, pi minus pi to the third over 3 factorial and keep going from there. But again, since I know this, I want this to be less than 0. 0.0001. I go into my table. I find that's y8, which is the 13th partial sum. Right here, y8. So now I can see that this is only going to be true when I have p sub 13 of x is going to be my good approximation. So that's going to be equal to x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial plus x to the ninth over 9 factorial minus x to the 11th over 11 factorial. And my error is going to be sine of x minus this. So my error, the magnitude of my error, is going to be equal to the absolute value of everything left over. So x to the 13th. No, wait, sorry. That is supposed to have x to the 13th over 13 factorial. So this would be starting with x to the 15th over 15 factorial plus x to the 17th over 17 factorial minus x to the 19th over 19 factorial. And my nth term, negative 1 to the nth, x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial, or I can just write it in summation notation. Summation from n equals blank, 
to infinity of negative 1 to the nth x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. Let me just experiment to figure out what n gives me that one. Uh, I want to get 15, so uh, 7 gives me 14 plus 1. There it is written out a little bit more succinctly. You can use that. Yeah, cool. And here's one other problem that I want to give you guys with remainder. And then I'm just going to do a couple of problems out of the book. Because, again, the stuff beyond this, really what you need to recognize is you have the biggest error at the endpoints, And the best error, meaning no error whatsoever, is at the center. Your center will always be a dead-on right uh, thing to have here. So use 1 plus x squared plus x to the fourth plus x to the sixth to approximate 1 over 1 minus x squared. Okay, cool. Well, that's actually pretty nice because this is a over 1 minus r, which I know is a geometric series where I have uh, a plus a r plus a r squared plus a r cubed. If you don't know that right now, go back and look at the geometric series. That's th that's just saying it's a geometric series. So 1 over 1 minus x squared is equal to, uh, well my a here is 1, so I have 1 plus 1 times my r is x squared, so I've got x squared plus a r squared 1 times x squared squared plus 1 times x squared cubed plus 1 times x squared uh, to the quattroth plus 1 times x squared to the fifth, blah, 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 which I can see is 1 plus x squared plus squared squared gives me x to the fourth plus x to the 6th plus x to the 8th plus x to the 10th. So I want to see what is a formula for this error. Well, again, I know error is equal to the magnitude of the difference between the actual function value and the, uh, uh, and, and the approximate function value. So in this case, it looks like I'm using p sub 6 for this one. And again, I'm looking for what is the error. The error is going to occur. Oh no, I'm just looking for a formula for the error. So the uh, error is going to be f of x being that 1 over 1 minus x squared minus p sub 6 of x. Well, looking at this, I know that f of x is equal to, and I'm just going to put this in a vertical fashion because it makes it easier to subtract. I know f of x is equal to 1 plus x squared plus x to the fourth plus x to the sixth plus x to the eighth plus x to the tenth plus dot 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 minus, okay, my p sub 6 is 1 plus x squared plus x to the fourth plus x to the sixth full stop. So if I look and subtract down here, gonzo, 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 it looks like my error is equal to x to the 8th plus x to the 10th, and just extrapolating, I'm going to have x to the 12th plus, it's just going to be a, an even exponent. Uh, if I wanted to start this as 0, I could call this 2x plus 12. I could also just call it 2x and start at 4, well, start at 8, 2x plus 8. I want to match the first one, where I can make n equal to 2n plus 8. I want to make sure that that matches the first one when I have n equals 0. So I'm going to have this be the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the 2n plus 8. But wait, I want a formula for this one. Well, this formula can come down to uh, where I have, uh, let's see, this can be rewritten as the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the 8th times 
x to the 2n. Well, golly gee, that is itself a geometric series, where my initial term is x to the h. My common ratio is x squared. So this can be written in a formula of a over 1 minus r, which would be x to the 8th over 1 minus x squared. Now, this is a very rare circumstance where you can actually come up with a formula. All right. I am not going to go through the rest of this uh, lesson. I'm just going to do some problems for you guys. So you can look through the, le the rest of this uh, the rest of this flip chart if you want to. It gets into f some fun stuff like proving convergence in the most ridiculous way ever, which is right here, proving there is no uh, remainder. Nobody ever does it this way. Lagrange form of the remainder, that is very difficult to master. You will see it again if you continue on with calculus. Using the remainder estimation theorem to prove uh, convergence for e to the x, which is just the way that we don't do this. We use something called the ratio test. Uh, finding the Lagrange error bound, you will not be required to do that on the AP test. And then your homework, it's posted on my website. Uh, in case I forgot to uh, put it on there, do not do number uh, 23. Uh, that is the Lagrange error bound, and I just don't feel like uh, destroying your hopes and dreams at this point in my life. Um, so now I'm going to switch over to just taking some problems directly out the book. Uh, you can see I'm, my hope is to do numbers 1, 3, 7, 10, and 20 from the book. We might cut that short depending on how quickly I can go through them. So number 1 asks me to find the Taylor polynomial of order 4 for the function at x equals 0. So looking at this one, number 1 is e to the negative 2x. What's nice there is I happen to have those Maclaurin series from the previous section memorized. Oh, no. Okay, apparently I can't go underneath my... There we go. There's the Maclaurin series. Those guys right there. So it's on page 491 that I'm uh, looking at in case you want to use your book and find out where I'm uh, looking here. Okay. I hope I'm still recording. Yeah, I'm still recording. All right. So looking here, I know that e to the x is just the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of... Uh, it's just x to the n over n factorial. Yeah, okay, cool. So in this case, I have negative 2x. So it's going to be negative 2x to the n over n factorial. Oh, wait, I didn't even want to do uh, the... Uh, uh, I didn't want to do n terms on this one, right? I just wanted to do the fourth order Taylor polynomial. All right, cool. So in this case, I just want to do p sub 4 of x. And p sub 4 just means go up until you have the fourth exponent, right? Yeah, cool. So in this case, I'm going to be doing, uh, let's see, plug in 0, negative 2x to the 0th power over 0 factorial plus negative 2x I'm counting up I got 1 to the first over 1 factorial plus negative 2x to the tooth over 2 factorial plus negative 2x to the third over 3 factorial plus negative 2x to the fourth over four factorial plus ha ha fooled you we don't actually want to go any further because I, uh, I i wanted to get up to the fourth term so here i'm just going to go in and simplify if i haven't told you yet zero factorial is one anything to the zero is one so this becomes one plus negative two x to the first that's going to be negative two x right divided by one so this would actually be minus two x let's just put this as plus negative 2x. I'll come up and clean that up in just a minute. I'm going to do it in multiple steps here. When I do negative 2x to the squared, well, negative 2 squared ends up being 4 uh, over, oh, so times x squared. So I get 4x squared over, let's just calculate 2 factorial. That's just 
2 times 1, 2. Plus negative 2 to the third, that's going to be negative 8 x cubed over 3 factorial, 3 times 2 is 6 times 1 gives me 6. Plus negative 2 to the fourth, that is 16 x to the fourth over 4 factorial, well, that's just going to be two, 2 times 3 times 1 times 4, so 24. I'm going to write this real big, use up two lines here, 1 minus 2x plus 4 divided by 2, I believe that is 2x squared, negative, so minus 8 6 4 thirds x cubed plus 16 24 2 thirds x to the fourth. Also asks you to find or to approximate f of point two. F of point two is approximately p sub four of point two, which would be equal to one minus two times point two. Okay, fine. Here's where we use a calculator. One minus two times point two plus two times point two squared minus four thirds point two to the third plus two thirds point two to the fourth fingers crossed did I get it right point six seven oh four there we go three is gonna be very similar except on number three we have ooh, five sine of negative x, which is going to, just going to be 5 times sine. Sine, we remember, is summation from n equals 0 to infinity. And it's an odd function, so it's going to be negative 1 x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. So p sub 4 of x. Well, I'm not going to be able to get to the fourth exponent because I'm just counting by odds. So I'm actually just going to have to go up to the third exponent because the fourth exponent is going to have a coefficient of zero. So this is going to be five times the quantity of x minus, oh, sorry, negative x. I'm plugging in negative x. Uh, negative x cubed over three factorial, which ends up being... Uh, negative 5x plus 5x cubed over 3 factorial. Yeah, so negative 5x plus 5,6x to the cube. F of point 0.2, just like in the previous problem, is going to be approximately p sub 4 of point 0.2 and there's where you're going to use your calculator negative 5 times point 0.2 plus 5 6 times point 0.2 to the third power Boom. this one I'm going to have to round so negative point 0.993 okay cool all right, now I want to do 7. Uh, not going to do 10 for you. I'm just going to do 7 and then uh, discuss number 20, and then we're going to call it a day. Seven has us find the Maclaurin series for the function x e to the x. In order to find this Maclaurin series, we fall back onto our Maclaurin series from the last section. Again, we're doing e to the x. So this is going to be x times the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of... Uh, oh, we already uh, talked about this one. x to the nth over n factorial. Well, 
that's not really a Maclaurin series because I have X hanging out here. I need to get X in there. And to get X in there, the easier way to do this, it is possible to just like do something to get it in there. But the better way to do this is to do X times the quantity and just write out all of the terms at 1 plus X plus X squared over 2 factorial plus x to the cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial until you run out of space to do it here. Again, it is possible to just do the work up here, but I find this to just be much more easy for me to understand. So here, I'm, I can look at this and I can see its polynomial distribution. I have x plus x squared plus x cubed over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over f 4 factorial. So looking at this, I can see that this is the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of um, x to the n plus 1 over n factorial. Again, you can do that in that first, that first step, but doing it with the polynomial distribution just makes it a lot easier to understand. Uh, I said I wasn't going to do number 10. Whatever. Let's do it. 10 gives me find a Taylor series for x squared over 1 minus 2x. What's actually nice here is this is a geometric series in which a is equal to x squared and r is equal to 2x, which is just nice. I mean, here, this ends up being a plus ar plus ar squared, so this ends up being x squared plus x squared times 2x plus ar squared. So this ends up being just x squared plus 2x cubed plus uh, the, lost my train of thought, <laughs> x squared times x squared, 4x to the fourth, or just equal to the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of a times r to the nth. Busting that out a little bit further, I can call that summation from n equals 0 to infinity of 2 to the nth x to the n plus 2. Ah, there we go. Alright, cool. Last one. Number 20. If cosine of x is replaced by 1 minus x squared over 2 and the magnitude of x is less than 0.5, what estimate can be made of the error? Does 1 minus x squared over 2 tend to be too large or too small? Okay, this is a really confusing question, which just says the error of this function is less than how much? So what is the biggest error that we can have? And the biggest error is going to occur at the endpoints of our interval. Our interval runs from negative 0.5 to 0.5. We just choose which one's easier to plug in. So my error is going to be the, or it's going to be less than the difference between f of 0.5 and p sub, which one are they doing? 2. 2 of 0.5. Really all this is asking to find the error, find cosine of 0.5 and subtract quantity of 1 minus 0.5 squared over 2. Plug that into your calculator and you can approximate the error. Cosine of 0.5 minus quantity of 1 minus 0.5 squared 0.25 over 2. Okay, cool. So our error is going to be less than 0.002 six. Yeah, cool. Pretty good error. All right. That's it for today. Again, you already have the homework. Smash that like button. Goodbye.